Today we will be looking at how you can bring your photo manipulations to life by creating a smooth transition in 3D space. This video is pretty much a completion to two previous videos I uploaded in which we go through creating two different scenes in Photoshop. I challenged you guys to get either one of those videos to 1000 likes if you're interested in learning how to turn both artworks into animation. You guys did it and here I am today fulfilling my part of the challenge so let's get started. So first of all let's launch Adobe After Effects and begin by importing both manipulation PSD files. If you don't have these files yet feel free to pause right here and watch the previously mentioned tutorial videos where I show you how to create them in Photoshop or you can simply take a shortcut by downloading them for a small fee from my Patreon page which also grants you access to dozens of other project files. Let's change this to composition so we can manipulate our Photoshop layers individually. Once imported, you'll notice that After Effects created a new composition out of each PSD file and if you open any of these comps, you'll also notice that the PSD layer structure has been transferred to After Effects with the exact same order of layers and effects retained as well. What we're gonna do next is drag the before composition and drop it over here on this icon and use it to create a completely new composition which will instantly open up. Let's go to the new composition settings and change its name to animation. Next, drag the second composition and place it below the first layer. So now we have a total of three compositions, before, after, and animation, which is our main composition containing both the before and after. Now to be able to achieve the 3D transition effect, first thing we need to do is switch all layers to 3D. And this applies to all layers inside both the before and after compositions. So this will give us the ability to move the layers in 3D space. And that's exactly what we're gonna do next. So let's go back to the before composition, press Ctrl A to select all layers, and now press P, hold down Shift and press S to pull up both position and scale properties for all the layers. So now if I go to the sky layer, for example, and change its position on the Z axis, you can see that the layer is moving further inside the view. It seems like it's being scaled down, but in fact, I'm pushing it deeper on the Z axis. And this is exactly the concept you need to apply here to place every single layer on a different Z coordinate to achieve the depth effect. Now, of course, naturally moving an object further makes it seem smaller. So let's scale it back up to compensate and vice versa. If it happens that you don't see any visual changes when doing this, make sure you disable collapse transformation on your layer first. There you go. Now notice that bringing the Z value down moves the object closer to us and a higher number pushes the object further away. That's why in my case here, I'm giving the sky and mountains much higher values since they are meant to be the furthest. Meanwhile, these virus graphics are meant to be much closer. Therefore, I'm decreasing their Z position value much lower. You can either copy the values I used here or play around with the placement on your own. Either way, once done, you can see that the layers now are placed on different depth positions. Again, you might not see that apply on all layers. So make sure you disable collapse transformations on all your layers. Let's have a look. Awesome, this actually looks great. So now let's go ahead and simply apply the same exact process on the other composition and spread the layers on the Z axis. The sky and mountains being the furthest. Let's push the astronaut back a little bit, scale it back up and the larger butterflies can be closer. And I'm gonna use that to fill the empty space around and create a nicer composition. Let's see how that looks. Depending on your project, you might end up having some objects out of the frame like me here, but no worries, we'll address that in a minute. Now let's go back to the animation comp, switch both layers to 3D, then go to layer, create a camera. Let's leave this on default and click OK. This time let's enable collapse transformations on both layers so that my active camera can actually see the 3D properties inside these compositions. It looks a bit messed up right now, so let's disable our camera temporarily. Let's drag this over here to zoom into a smaller portion of our timeline. Move to the first second mark, 
select the first composition layer and we're gonna start by creating the transition first. To do that, I'm going to use a native effect called Gradient Wipe. Double click to add it to your layer. Next, toggle this stopwatch to start recording keyframes on the transition completion. Press U to pull up the keyframes in the timeline. Let's move one and a half second further in the timeline and change the completion value to 100%. And since the stopwatch is toggled, a new keyframe will be created on this time code. So now we have two keyframes apart with two different values, which results in a transition. Let's select both keyframes, press F9 to easy ease and avoid having the animation start or end abruptly. You can tweak that even further by switching over to the graph editor and drag both handles to slow the transition down on both ends. Now that we have our transition out of the way, let's focus on the camera movement and emphasize on the 3D depth effect. So let's go back to the beginning of our timeline. First enable the camera and under transform, toggle the positions stopwatch and let's push the camera position in towards the astronaut. Next, move to the fourth second mark or so and this time pull the camera back and further from the astronaut. Let's have a look. Nice, looks good, but of course we still need to tweak this further. Switch over to the graph editor and drag the left and right handles towards the inside to slow down the motion on both ends. This peak on the graph right here represents the highest speed the camera achieves during the transition. So let's try and time that with the gradient wipe transition to create a perfectly synced motion which will make our animation look much more natural. This is exactly what I had in mind. Some of the butterflies are too close to the center of the frame and I think I can fix that by changing the camera's focal length. So let's go with 50 millimeter preset and see if that works. I guess I just need to adjust the position on the second keyframe. So let's push the camera in. Nice. Let's do the same on the first keyframe. Just push the camera in much closer. Let's preview that. Awesome, looks really, really good. I see a weird line here. Apparently some of the layers here are not blending well together. Let's see. I guess I can fix that by sliding the sky a bit lower. Right, cool. I'm happy with the motion, but uh, we can actually make it even more natural. So let's go back to the before composition, select all layers and enable motion blur. Make sure it's enabled on the composition level as well and do the exact same thing for the after composition. Adding motion blur makes your animation look much more natural. It might slow down your preview and render time. That's why I usually leave this step to the very end. I feel that some of the virus graphics are still out of the frame here. I obviously want to see more of that at the beginning. So let's go back to this composition and bring the virus graphic closer to the center. You are free to place these wherever you want as long as the composition looks balanced and you can readjust their position anytime just like me here which makes things really flexible. Let's see how that looks. To make the scene look a bit more realistic we can also add depth of field but first let's go to the fifth second mark. Press N on your keyboard to mark the endpoint and let's trim our working area down since we have a really short animation here and I think 5 seconds is all we need. Next open camera options, enable depth of field, let's change the blur level to 600% or so. Now I want the astronaut to always be in focus so let's go to the focus distance, toggle the stopwatch and bring the focus distance down until you find that sweet spot where the astronaut looks the sharpest. Next, let's move to the end of the animation and increase the focus distance value to bring the astronaut back in focus. I think the blur level is too high, so let's reduce that to 400%. And actually, I wanna go back and move the virus elements even closer to the center so we can see more of that in the beginning of the animation. Let's have a look at the result. Smooth. All right, cool. At this stage, you can go ahead and render your animation. I usually send this over to Adobe Media Encoder since I have better control over the output settings there. So if you don't have it, make sure you add it to your workflow as it really makes the rendering process much easier. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As usual, do let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or requests. Don't forget to hit the sub button if you want to be the first to hear about new content like this one. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.